Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different for me in that I'm not reviewing one specific product, but rather looking at a few cross-platform applications for video production. Now, when I talk about cross-platform, I'm talking about applications that work on Windows, Linux, and Mac. I frequently switch between those three operating systems, testing out different things for this channel and just, you know, my geek projects. And I want tools that I'm familiar with that are consistent across those operating systems. Now there are a ton of tools out there. So if I don't cover the, your favorite in this video, it just means that I don't use it. It doesn't mean it's no good. So please leave those down in the comment section below if you have another recommendation or questions about anything that I cover in this video. With that out of the way, let's get into our first topic, which is video editing. My video editor of choice, and you probably already know this if you're subscribed to my channel, is DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a professional grade video production suite. It's got best in class color correction, the Fusion Compositor tab that's a extremely powerful compositor. Uh, it's got Fairlight audio and an amazing video editing suite. This does run on Mac, Linux, and Windows, and there's two versions. There's the free version and a paid version. The paid version is $300 outright. Now I do wanna talk about those two different versions because there's some limitations with the free version. On the Mac, the free version is awesome. It, it runs just as well as the paid version. On Windows, if you're using 4K H.264 MP4 video, there is some performance issues with the free version. Uh, it has to do with the H.264 decoder that's included with the operating system that the free version uses. That is not an issue in the paid version. The paid version has much better performance and works great. And then on Linux, there's some significant limitations with the free version. You cannot use MP4s at all. Uh, you need to transcode your video to another format that you can then bring into Resolve, which works great if you wanna just stick with that free version. With the paid version, you do get some more advanced features, but in addition to those advanced features, you get much better performance in Windows and on Linux. Uh, it does support MP4, but it does not support AAC audio or AC3 audio within that MP4, so you need to do uh, some manipulation on that. If you wanna check that out, I'll have a video on my Linux channel to show you how to work around that issue. I'll put a link down below to that channel. Now, like I said earlier in the video, if there was a paid option, I'd provide a free option available. So if you don't wanna spring for that paid version of DaVinci Resolve and you find the free version a little bit too limited, another option is Kden Live. Kden Live originally was only on Linux, but it now runs on Windows and Mac OS as well. Uh, this is another full featured application. The developers have been doing some huge advancements on this software. so. Kudos to the developers of Kden Live. They're doing a great job. And if you have a more uh, basic need for video editing, it is a great option. You can do color correction, you can do chroma keying in it. You know, there's obviously multiple layers and video effects and transitions and all that kind of stuff. Everything you would need to edit your video. It's a great free option and available on all three operating systems. So next up is photo editing and creating thumbnails, things like that. Now I'll say right out, I am no expert on this. I use these tools to create my thumbnails and that's about the extent of my photo editing. Uh, I do know that other people use these in a more professional capacity though, and I have two options for you. First up is GIMP and GIMP is an amazing tool. A lot of people refer to it as a Photoshop replacement. Uh, I don't exactly agree with that. I would say it's more of a Photoshop alternative. And the reason for that is that it's not quite as full featured as Photoshop is, but it's free, it's open source, it's available cross platform, and it is the editor that I use by far the most. You can do photo correction, it has multiple layers, uh, you know, you can add effects and do all your color correction. Everything that I need to do is available within GIMP. The next application I put into this category, this application was originally designed to be a digital art application for drawing and sketching and stuff like that, but it is so robust that it has some great photo editing tools in it. That is Krita. Krita uh, can be used for multiple purposes. Like I said, uh, digital art, digital painting and stuff like that. It's got tons of brushes available and different tools for creating 
uh, digital media. It also has robust photo editing tools. So I know a lot of people use this again as an alternative to Photoshop. I haven't really used it in that capacity. Again, my needs are much more basic, but I do know people that use this in a professional capacity. And if you do a search out there, there's tons of videos that go into more detail about that for Krita. Next up is audio editing and manipulation. And honestly, since I use DaVinci Resolve, I use the Fairlight audio within there for most of my audio editing. But the other tool that I use is Audacity. Audacity, again, is cross-platform. It's 100% free, and it is a very powerful application that's been around for a long time. It's very solid. It's got very good support, and you can do tons of stuff with it. The thing that I use it the most for is removing noise from my videos. So if I have constant background noise or hiss, there's really good tools within Audacity to remove that noise and make it much quieter. And then I will bring it into my video editor. That's primarily how I use it. There's tons and tons more tools available in Audacity. So I definitely recommend that you download it and check it out. Next up is game capture, screen capture, and streaming. And of course, this is gonna be OBS or open broadcast software. OBS is the king in this realm. Uh, you can capture your screen. You can capture external sources like your webcam or a capture device, microphone, all that kind of stuff. And then you can layer that together in a scene. So you can have kind of your screen capture in the background and your webcam down in the corner and multiple audio sources. And then you can set up multiple scenes to switch between those for uh, on a single click. So if you're doing something like streaming and you wanna have one scene that has uh, the game capture full screen and then another scene that has the game capture full screen with yourself down in the corner and you wanna be able to switch between those, you can do that in a single click. Super easy to set up, really solid and works really well on all three OSs. Last thing is 3D modeling, rendering, and doing motion graphics. And for that, Blender is my choice by far. Honestly, I don't use this all that much. I have done some motion graphics in it. I do a little bit of modeling in it, and I have played around with the video editor. Blender does have a video editor built in. This is another one of those applications that has great community support, and each version has uh, just an amazing amount of updates applied to it. There's been some very professional grade videos made entirely in Blender. It's amazing how powerful this application is and it's free and cross-platform. So that is my list for cross-platform applications for video production. Again, these are the ones that I use. I use them in almost every single one of my videos, but these are by no means the only ones available. If you have one that you like that I didn't mention, please leave that down in the comment section below. If you want me to go into more details on any of the applications that I covered in this video, leave that as well. I'm, I love suggestions like that. Uh, if you found this useful and informative, hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.